Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Payne, and welcome to Let's Learn Python. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side, jump to the any specific section or the examples. Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4 and you can download it from python.org slash get it. Today we'll be focusing on arguments and keyword arguments. This will build lightly on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch any of them again if anything is unclear. Alright, so arguments. We've discussed in the past how functions take in arguments. So what we'll be discussing today is how to take an unlimited number of arguments or keyword arguments. First we'll discuss arguments. We use star ARGS to take an unlimited number of regular variables or arguments. We use this within the function definition as a preventative measure to keep the program from crashing if we don't know how many arguments are going to be passed in. This is used in C++ and other programming languages as well. Alright, so how do we use it? So let's go ahead and fire up idle. Okay, and let's go ahead and save this to the desktop. And we're going to call this args underscore kw args underscore example dot py. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and create a simple function. First, we're going to type in def and then capital F for func and then star args and then in the parentheses in colon. And what this is doing is star args is saying, hey, for however many regular arguments we take in, this is going to catch them all. After that, we're just going to go ahead and create a simple for loop for arg in args colon enter print arg. Okay, and that's it. And now let's go ahead and test this function. We're going to type func to call the function, open parentheses, 1, 2, 3, 54, ham. <laughs> Just as a whole bunch of arguments, so you can see the full range of it. Let's go ahead and save it and run it. And you can run it from the menu bar using run, run module, or F5. Okay, I went ahead and ran it, and everything printed out exactly as I thought it would. 1, 2, 3, 54, and a ham. Everything. Awesome. Now, what if we were to pass in a list of items? How would args react to that? So let's go ahead and cut that from there create a list using typing l equals open pr bracket paste close bracket and then just punch in l in there into the args now what do you think will happen do you think it'll run through and print out each individual item or will it print out the list as a whole let's go ahead and save it and test it it printed the list as a whole the reason being is it's interpreting the list as one item when it's passed in here but what if we wanted to actually have each individual item be passed in as an argument well, one way we could do that is by typing in each one by the longhand. So we could type open bracket zero, close brackets, L, and then create another one, and then call each individual item L, like open bracket two, and, and so on and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and run that. And then it, it print out the items that we passed in, just as we'd expect. But there's an easier way to do this. And what we're going to type is star L. And what they're saying is that, hey, this is a list of items. We could also pass in uh, dictionaries or tuples if we wanted. This is a list of items we're passing in under the arguments. So let's go ahead and save and run that. And now it prints out just as before. It's running through the list and printing out each individual item because these are being passed in as individual arguments. Perfect. Isn't that cool? That's cool. That's got to be cool. <laughs> All right. So now we'll move on to the topic of keyword arguments. And keyword arguments are just like arguments, except you declare the the variables and the amount within the function arguments. Now we really haven't gone over this in the past, so I'm going to go over it in further depth now. In func, I'm going to go ahead and replace the uh, arguments with x equals 234, whatever, and then y equals 9. After that, I'm just going to go ahead and replace everything else with pass. Now if we try to run this function, let's go ahead and type func, open close parentheses, save, F5. And it works perfectly. We can actually go ahead and replace this pass with a print x comma y. Save that, run it again. Oops, I misspelled print. Save, F5, and it prints both X and Y. Now, why is this working? Well, keyword arguments are basically setting up default values for X and Y. It's saying, hey, if no value is passed in, then assume the value is 234 or 9 for Y. So if we wanted to replace those values, we could easily do so by overriding the variables that we declared in the arguments. So we'll type X is equal to 456, and then Y is equal to 3. Save that, go ahead and test it, and now you'll see that it prints both of them. Both these variables are overridden, and the new values are printed out. Perfect. So that's how keyword arguments work. Now we're going to go ahead and use the star star keyword up here, we're going to type in kw args, and then we're going to do the same for loop as before, except with a slight tweak. Because it's interpreting the keyword arguments as a dictionary, we're going to go ahead and call them like a dictionary. So for item in kw args colon enter 
print item. Save that, run it, and I forgot to type in dot item, open close parentheses, save, and this will call out each individual item. Go ahead and run that again. And now it prints out each individual item as a pair within a tuple. So uh, X has a value of 456 and Y has a value of three. Perfect, that's exactly what we declared in the arguments below here. So now let's go ahead and combine both features into the single function. And right ahead of keywords, we're gonna type star args, comma, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and insert a for loop for the args again. For arg in args, colon, enter, print, arg, save that. And now with these two special arguments, we can pass in an unlimited number of keyword arguments and regular arguments. Keep in mind though, that you must keep them in order. The arguments must come first and the keyword arguments must come after. If you were to split them up and try to run like 21 after the keyword arguments definition, in fact, it will not compile. So I go ahead and type in 12 right here after the keyword arguments declaring more arguments, it will not work. So watch this. Type F5 to save and it will pop up, give me a pop up error saying that there's, uh, it, it won't work. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final challenges as they really have some thought provoking and tough concepts behind them. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all. And please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. Um, it would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive.